Hey guys, this is Captain Obvious, and welcome back to Fisher Enclave City. In the previous episode, we expanded a little more of the city by creating a tiered zoo with an awesome suspended tour which brings you close enough to see the animals from the safety of bird's eye view by cable car. And if you haven't seen that episode and want to check it out, the link is in the description. And as we continue to expand the city, it is imperative that we first establish our highways and interchanges before occupying the terrain with road networks and buildings. Highways and interchanges are literally the backbone of your city. It expeditiously with speed and efficiency brings goods, residents, and tourists in and out of your city. If you fail to plan, this crucial network of your city, then you plan to fail. A common question is what type of interchange should I make? But not too many mayors would take a second thought to consider where an interchange should be. We are currently building here, which is at the edge of the map, and I have no plans of unlocking the nearby tiles, but I do however plan to unlock this tile as our final ninth vanilla tile and the goal is to provide your highway and interchange backbone to this part of the city please ignore the current campuses and roads in that area they are there just to simply upgrade the campus level while we fill in the rest of the city but as we slowly start to creep into this side of the map it is again important that we first establish our highway network and of course the absolute purpose of this is to reduce future traffic. And this is how the captain maintains the above 90% traffic flow with over 100,000 population in all my city builds. So back to the fundamental question, where should I place my highways and interchanges? As much as possible, what I try to do is to place the highways and interchanges on areas with the least value. I am not referring to land value. Instead, what I mean is the area that you would use the least to build your road networks to construct your buildings and things. An excellent example are steep slopes, which is a nightmare to zone buildings on. For example, this terrain area. Instead of flattening or reducing the slope so you could add your roads and buildings, instead I utilize the slope to construct my interchange. Slopes are actually an ideal location to place interchanges so you could naturally build your highway stacks. Placing highways and interchanges on flat or slightly sloped terrain is a complete waste of real estate. So instead, Find the least zonable area, which are your steep slopes, or in this case, the side of the mountain. This mountain does absolutely nothing, so let's make him useful by gently wrapping a highway along with it. And as a result, we have managed to open more space to zone and add nice things. However, it is still absolutely possible and in reality, there are cities which have highways and interchanges that wrap around your city buildings and they look phenomenal. In order to pull that off, you will need extreme planning and with the help of Life Made Easy Mods. Since this city is a vanilla build and we are limited to 9 tiles, therefore every space counts. Hence why I try to make the least useful areas, such as steep slopes, as an ideal location for highways and interchanges. So let us discuss my decision on placing this interchange here, which contradicts everything I just said, because it is not on a steep slope and has ample space to zone. Well, first of all, the curves of this default highway is a little funky and needs to be redone. And we definitely need to connect this highway to this interchange, which would reduce the number of vehicles that would travel along this highway bridge. Furthermore, as much as possible, I try to avoid building anything alongside the borders of the map. So when you switch to cinematics view, 
it does not become too apparent of where the edges of your tiles are. Therefore, I am purposely keeping this area mostly vacant. This map by default does not have any outside train connections, hence why I am mostly relying on monorails for our high-speed public transportation. However, since the introduction of the train station's content creator pack, I will find a way to make train lines useful for both cargo and passengers. I am fully aware that there is a ship connection on the mouth of this river, which will enable me to add car a cargo hub that accepts both train and ship cargo. We are nearing the end of the interchange build and you may have noticed me redoing some of the ramps simply because it did not look right. For instance, this ramp is a little too fuzzy while wide curves would be preferable. I still want to keep the interchange as compact as possible but we also want wide natural curves. I have also provided ample space for a future train line to pass over the interchange. Now those ramp curves looks a little more natural. Although I would have preferred this straight top stack ramp to be curved but the pillars will not allow it. This is a vanilla problem which we have to accept. These are built in ruins that comes with the map which is also another reason why I did not want a highway close to it. Rather we are constructing the highway on the side of the mountain. If you have been following along the series, I have actually kept all the built-in features of the map as an added challenge. We are done with the interchange so let us review our work and the progress of our city. Let us take a few moments to observe that we have connections that go in all directions. There is a good chance that I may have missed something but I'm sure that someone in chat We'll point it out anyway, if there are any. Well, for one thing, uh, it may be preferable if this was a main highway, but it is still very much functional and there is no traffic. So we will keep it as is until it becomes necessary to make adjustments. But overall, the highway works as intended. And that is enough. So... Again, the plan is to construct a convincing highway along this mountain, then create an interchange somewhere here. Then the highway will continue along or through the mountain. We'll have to wait and see. Uh, then another interchange will emerge from this end. Uh, don't pay attention to this road layout. Uh, again, all of this is temporary. Uh, anyhow, so the interchange will emerge here because uh, we do not want everyone to bottleneck into the interchange that will be on this side. Hence why we are creating another on this end. Then the highway goes to the island uh, where we will have an airport and of course an interchange uh, somewhere here. And finally reconnect to this interchange. And with this plan, I assume that we will maintain our 90% traffic flow. And, and we will get, we will definitely get up to over 100,000 population. Hmm, it appears that we are experiencing a death wave. Well, actually it's just this. I guess it's taking a long time for the hearses to arrive here. And we are also in the processing, uh, in the process of emptying our cemetery so we have less hearses uh, out there basically to pick up the dead um, anyhow let's check our city stats and that is a gorgeous graph right there there is no extreme down spikes and we will maintain this until we unlock the final ninth tile Oh, and look, we are a little over one century into the city. Uh, so I actually started the city on November 23rd, 2020. 
so I started to practice by naming the city after the map name and I also add the date of when I started for reference uh, regarding the death wave um, the captain is no way worried I'm pretty sure we have ample death care yep so it's just taking a while to pick up the uh, the bodies uh, what else is there other than that there are no other alarming alerts that we should be concerned about um, everything else are just uh, delivery delays so if you haven't already please consider hitting that subscribe button smash that thumbs up and leave a comment of what you like did not like or what you are looking forward to and if you want to watch me play City Skylines live, uh, you can catch me on the link below and in the description. I also have social channels, so if you're looking for inspirational ideas, feel free to check me out there too. Until then, this is Captain Obvious. Thank you for watching, and I hope to see you again in the next episode.